Hi folks, this is Jake. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. We're looking at Gary Habermas on the resurrection of Jesus and we're looking at uh, his methodology. We're looking at his PhD and I'll link to his PhD if you want to study historical Jesus studies and the resurrection of Christ then have a look at Gary Habermas's PhD. Uh, without further ado we'll, we will uh, just listen to uh, a little Gary Habermas and then talk a little bit about his PhD. Just Muslims just a little while ago, a few years ago, they both come to Christ, they both debate regularly, are into apologetics big time, both writing books. Abdu's already got a book out. Uh, I didn't miss one of yours, did I? You already written like five books and I just don't know about it? No. Oh, and for you guys who are like really, really rough, they're both in the mixed martial arts, so don't mess around with them. Nabil has a second degree black belt in Taekwondo and Abdu always tells him he's nothing. He just can't handle him, you know? So, you know, I mean, you know, it helps to, when you're in apologetics, it helps to work with mixed martial arts. They kind of <laughs> go along, go along together. I was an ice hockey coach at Liberty for, uh, I don't know, not nine years. I was a head coach. And so I tell people, hockey goes along with with apologetics too because Christians and hockey players solve their problems in roughly the same manner. Okay, well, that's enough of an introduction. But seriously, that, I just said that this is of first importance because it concerns the gospel. Now, let me stop here for a moment, talk a little bit about my methodology, a little about his, historiography, and then we're going to go down and do the, the uh, walking and talking for the rest of this. By the way, it's time to the end. I don't, it takes me a little while to do this. Um, we're done at 9.30, but I've been told that there's nothing else going on in here, and we can stay a little bit longer if you folks want to stay for Q&A after it's over. If you need to get up and go, or you told somebody you'd meet up at 9.30, no offense whatsoever, just you know, get up and leave at 9.30. But if some of you want to stay, did not accept things at face value from Scripture. I started working on a methodology that I now call the minimal facts method. I, divide, I developed in my doctoral dissertation at uh, Michigan State uh, University. I should stop and see where I am before I think about, okay, do they hate, hate Michigan State around here? Okay, we're in the West Coast. I probably can say that I'm okay. Um, now, if I said Michigan, somebody's already, I'm not from Michigan, but somebody, University of Michigan, somebody told me tonight there's a lot of, there's a lot of. Um, so we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, his lecture in more detail in a minute. Uh, Gary Habermas's PhD. He writes, uh, To the contrary, Jesus was believed to be literally being raised from the dead as he appeared to his followers before his return to heaven. Um, Gary Habermas is doing a PhD trying to show that Jesus rose from the dead, trying to do it as objective as he can. He covers a wide a uh, variety of scholars from um, from Markson to Bornecombe in page 5 to Reginald H. Fuller uh, K. L. Schmidt in 1891-1956 um, Martin Diabolus, Rudolf Bultmann etc uh, Paul Mayer, Yamuchi, John Warwick Montgomery, William Ward then in the first part of his PhD he goes on to Hume studies. He writes a quote of David Hume. A miracle may be accurately defined as a transgression of a law of nature by a particular violation of deity or by the interposition of some invisible agent. Habermas then quotes C.S. Lewis. I use the word miracle to mean an um, interference with the nature by a supernatural power. Habermas writes in this proper in this paper the writer will refer to a miracle as an event which interferes with the laws of nature but does not violate them. I agree with that. Page 30 in his PhD there is such a disagreement as to a suitable definition of myth today. There is such disagreement as to a suitable definition of myth today. So in Gary Habermas's PhD, he defines his terms, and I kind of would agree with him about his definition of miracle, and 
uh, I would agree with him even today the scholarship on what a myth is is very very nebulous there's many different ideas and we'll get into more detail now on David Hume and we'll listen to a bit more of Gary Habermas's position 